Got a package here, came in the mail. This is something I have ordered myself off eBay. <laughs> Baby says, there's a box. And Felix is being taught starting early. Baby's going to teach him. Yeah, baby cat, there's a box, huh? Uh, this is something I ordered. And something I desperately need here at the off-grid homestead. Of course, Felix is learning really early about boxes now. This is really exciting, guys. This is a big moment. Drum roll, please. If I had drums, I'd play it real quick. You ready for this? This is huge. This is exciting. This is a really, really big moment for the off-grid homestead. And yes, I bought this with my own money. This is a Morningstar TriStar solar charge controller. I need this desperately to improve situations here at the off-grid homestead. <laughs> and Felix got the box. <laughs> he didn't waste any time getting in that box. So, very exciting moment. This is not an MPPT, MPPT solar charge controller. But it looks just like the one I already have on the wall. Uh, I couldn't afford the MPPT right now. But I did get a 60 amp solar charge controller. So, although it's not, like I said, although it's not the, uh, the MPPT, it looks the same. It's going to look great on the wall next to the original, the other one, and uh, it's going to increase my total overall power uh, output here at the off-grid homestead. Winter is coming, and I really need to improve the situation here before winter sets in fully. I really need to improve my solar power production and uh, this is going to ha have a big, big play in that. So I'll be installing this today. I'm not wasting any time at all. This is 60 amps uh, maximum capacity with a uh, surge of 75 amps. So I'm going to load this up with four solar panels right away. Uh, 800 watts I think should keep me under 75 amps especially with the, uh, the amount of clouds we get all the time. So I'm going to have two sets of solar panels on two different solar charge controllers running at any given time here now. And that'll improve my, uh, my power output because as it is right now, the charge controller I have hooked up is always limiting the amount of current and in full maximum sunlight, I'm not getting as much as I could. So hopefully this will make a difference and I'm going to hook it up and we'll see how it goes. First I have cleared out this entire wall area. I had my little uh, cube fridge down here in the corner forever. Which by the way did not work. That was the compressorless fridge. Oh, the, the fridge works, don't get me wrong. My compressorless fridge, but it was using too much power for my solar battery bank and my solar panels to handle. So I had that off. It was just sitting up here taking space forever. And then I moved the cat's water dish and cat food dish, which confuses Felix greatly. And i uh, cleaned out this entire area. And I've cleared off the wall. I'm going to lower and explain what I have going on here right now. I'm going to lower the MPPT solar charge controller a few inches more. The wood up here is a little warm and I think that'll work more efficiently and more happily and extend the life of the device if I drop that down a few inches. So while I'm in here working I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And that'll be one of the first things I do. And then I've got to splice in all this massive cables. I've got to splice in to them and I've also ha I also have to hook up another switch for the second set of solar panels. Right now everything is connected to one single switch and that is not going to work with two different solar charge controllers and two separate sets of solar panels. Fortunately I have the wires in place I just have to I'm going to tap in to the wires coming off the battery somewhere here in the middle 
and then go straight up from here, wire it off into the other charge controller. Same with the sense wires, the battery voltage sense wires. I'm just going to tap into that and go straight up into the second charge controller. And the only thing I have to add new will be an extension to the wires from the solar panel uh, set to the second solar charge controller. So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is just lower this original MPPT solar charge controller down a few inches and then lower all my wires and I'll get back to reorganizing that once I've put in the new charge controller. Today is both a good day and a bad day for working in the solar power system. A good day because it's raining out anyway pretty hard. Uh, just had another thunderstorm hit real fast and uh, blowing my furniture over. Had a barbecue this weekend right there and uh, had a big group of friends over. So um, unfortunately it's been raining ever since. I've got to put the furniture away. But uh, yeah, it's a good day for working on solar because there is no solar power coming in so there's nothing to lose with having the wires unhooked. It's a bad day because I keep getting lightning striking and uh, I don't like the idea of being zapped through the lines while I'm working on it. And for some reason the lightning strikes seem to follow the lines up into my house. So, um, although even if it's from miles and miles away. So, got pros and cons of working on solar power on a rainy day. But when there's no sun it's the best time to work on your solar because there's nothing to lose. Here comes the rain. Really starting to come down. I do think we got some hail coming down. There's some serious white chunks coming down. Oops, it just stopped as I grabbed the camera. It was beating on the roof of the house. It just stopped. Oh, there it goes. You can see some white. I don't know if it shows on camera. You can see some occasional white things coming down. It is beating on the house. Well, this is a serious rainstorm today, but that's good because uh, with my guests over staying in a week, uh, what was it, five, six days in the area, uh, used half of my water tank's capacity, my rainwater collection, um, serving guests and stuff. So it's good. It's um, half of what was used has been replenished already. And if it keeps raining like this, it'll fill right up and I'll be right back to normal. And we are going to be entering the dry season soon. Actually, it has been dry and I was just about to start work on the tiny house again this week. But we have a period of thunderstorms and so I'll have to delay that, but that's, that's no big deal. We're entering the drier season here soon. And tiny house construction will begin again with all the woodworking. Because the wood is going to be dry, humidity will be reduced and uh, construction will begin again very soon. Probably have to wait till next week because we got some thunderstorms passing through this week but after that uh, we've, we're going into a dry spell and this is the most rain I've seen all summer to be honest. We get rain every day or every second day and at the least every third day but it's just a little bit here and there just enough to wet things down but the ground has been starving for water and uh, the well up at the, uh, what would I call her now, my neighbor's house is, has run dry. So I'm surprised that although, although it rains here so often, there's no quantity. But I remember that from last year as well. It rains here a lot, but not enough quantity. So um, I lost most of my melon plants. And my, um, all of, I lost all of my pumpkins, all of my acorn squash to either disease or just being baked dead by the sun. The only thing that's really thrived is my cucumbers and my tomato plants, which I'll show you. Uh, I've got to get out there and stake up the tomatoes and let them climb now. So I'll be showing you that soon here. Anyway, back to work. The off-grid homestead and the tiny house on wheels. Hi, everybody. I know I haven't showed the weather much in a long time, but the weather hasn't been much worth showing. Uh, but this is truly impressive, I have to say. This is really, truly impressive. You can't even see hardly across the meadow. It's raining that hard. We have literally a 99% humidity level, uh, which means that 
even my windows in the house are fogging up and so forgive the cloudy appearance of everything but uh, I might just go out and take a bar of soap and have a free shower it's raining so hard but just wanted to share this with you I find it quite exciting because the earth needed it badly the ground the soil was being parched by the intensity of the sun and everyone who visited this past week all agreed that the sun at the intensity of the sun here is just um, it scorches you it's it just seems more intense here and everybody agrees and everybody said the same thing it's it's very odd I don't know what it is or why but it seems more intense and even the kids couldn't stay out in the sun for more than a couple minutes at a time so uh, won't have any people out here in bikinis and lounge chairs sucking up the rays in this property anyway I just wanted to share that with you it's coming in extreme burst which I find quite exciting and it's filling up my water tank so going into the dry period that's gonna be a great great benefit I've got the original charger charge controller lowered quite a bit lowered the original screw is here up here and I dropped it down this far quite a few inches and then I used a level and the uh, template that comes with the other charge controller and I got it lined up evenly next to the other one on the wall and I had to scrounge around from some wiring in between thunderstorms we have another powerful storm coming and I was working on the sorry about the shakiness I set up the Bedini motor inside the motorhome the RV and got that running again to continue restoring the old golf cart batteries um, by the way the golf cart batteries are powering the RV again so I'll have to take you on a tour through there I'll show you what I've done but um, I gotta start snipping and pasting and putting in some wires here for my charge controllers so right now I'm making a cup of tea using herbs from my own garden I'm experimenting with a homemade mouthwash idea using sage, oregano, and some mint for flavor and sweet leaf for sweetness. All for my own garden. And I'm going to drink the tea and swish it around my teeth thoroughly. Uh, some of those herbs are a, um, what are they, astringent and antibacterial, antimicrobial, and all kinds of other things that I can barely pronounce. So it should be good for my mouth. And uh, I figure I'll start drinking a tea once a day if it tastes good. I'm sucking on a piece of sweet leaf right now which is quite amazing. So, well, back to work on the wiring. I had to go to town actually and, uh, and get some ends there over on my desk and when I got home the first thing I did is I drilled some holes. I have these plastic um, conduit pipes I have a right hand and a left hand and what I've done is drilled some holes in them and then I'm going to take and put a nut in there and tighten it down really tight and then this will be fastened to the wall and then what I've got is a I'm doing this for really good now in my house then I can come in with the wire see that and it's all safe and protected and sheltered so the positive and negative wires and I come in through the bottom here and simple pop it on so I can add wires as needed in here and it'll be totally isolated because there's a actually it's waterproof lid that goes on here so I had these conduits that are going on the wall and that'll protect my electronics from shorting out or my, my main wires from shorting out one and another and I gotta get that going I have so far have no power uh, coming into the house right now I've cut the positive wire and I, I removed all the power from the original charge controller and this has been quite a long long job it's actually gonna take me the entire day and I did not expect this but I want to do it right and so I decided to actually use crimp on end connectors and do everything proper good and right here so it just takes longer 
that is just how it's going to be. But anyway, it'll be worth it in the end. So I've got to figure out where these are going to be mounted on the wall and in which direction that works best for my wiring. And as soon as I get that, then I can start crimping on the ends and then I'll have power coming in from the solar again in my tiny house on wheels.